Well, here's Gregory Pickram. I remember we saw him down in Texas, Bob. Uh, he had a war with Ike Ibiabuchi. Got stopped. That's his only loss to date. He's still sitting now at 6-1-1. Six, one one, six knockouts. And he's going to be taking on Jameel McCline. Don't know much about Jameel, except that he's 2-1-1, two, one one, two knockouts. And he's uh, 25 years old. The only time I think we saw him now that I re recollect looking at the record was against Gary Bell. He got stopped by Gary Bell in one round back November 18th on a CKP show. He's a very green kid, uh, didn't have any amateur experience, and uh, they say he's improving, you know, every time out. He's uh, up here working with Tim Witherspoon, preparing him for his, his fight with uh, the big Cuban, Valdez, as opposed to the li little Cuban, Valdez. That's right, big show coming up May 10th, Madison Square Garden on HBO. And we're going to go up to our ring announcer, Chuck Cease, with the official introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, our heavyweight explosion continues with an eight-round contest. And your referee is Charlie Zgrillo. First off, in the blue corner, to my left. Coming into the ring tonight from Houston, Texas, weighing 212 and a half pounds, wearing solid blue trunks. He has a professional record of six wins, one loss and one draw, and all six of his victories are by knockout. Here is Gregory Pickrow. Pickrow. His opponent in the red corner to my left is from Port Jefferson, New York, weighing in at 236 and a half pounds. His professional record is two wins, one loss, one draw. Both of his victories are by knockout. He is wearing a white trunks. Welcome, Jamil McClyne. McClyne. All right, gentlemen, I want you to obey my commands at all times. Protect yourself at all times. Are there any questions? Good luck. Yeah. All right, scheduled eight rounder, Greg Pickram, Jamil McCline. <laughs> Pickram coming in today. Six, one, and one. It's that one stoppage, the Ike Ivy Abuchi. You know, which was a very tough fight. I, I really like this Greg Pickram. He, he looks to me, he fights in a style very similar to Evander Holyfield. He's kind of got a, a choppy rhythm, and he's got good quickness for a heavyweight, as, as you'll see. The, 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 his manager, Willie Savannah, who was my mentor when I first got into this business, was was worried about the size difference because, really, Greg Pickram's a, you know, a blown-up cruiserweight, but they know that that's where the money is in this business, and, uh, you know, that's why they're here in the heavyweight division, but they've never fought a guy this big. I've never, I tell you, I walked back to the dressing room and I saw Jamil McCline back there and I said, who is this guy? Six foot six, 236 pounds. And you have to wonder sometimes, you want to give up, whether even if you're the superior fighter, do you want to give up this kind of weight and height? Pickram not small, he's six foot two, 212 pounds for today's fight. But it is, and, and a guy with no amateur experience and a big, strong guy like this, you got to figure, you know, he, he might just get wild and hit you with some stupid stuff. And that's that's what I know Willie Savannah's going over in his mind right now, because he doesn't figure to be outboxed by this guy. And also, I'm, I'm kind of wondering why McClain, uh, you know, with only four professional fights and no amateur background, is in a in a scheduled eight round bout because he certainly, uh, you know, can't, uh, you know, have be benefiting from any great experience or whatever they have. But look at him here trying to turn Greg Pickram here and and hook off the pivot. Well, this fight, of course, is what we call in boxing a collapsible. It could have gone six or eight, and I think he found himself maybe conned into the eight side of the six because we had a little bit of time here due to the knockout. If you're just joining us, of Derek Roddy by Ahmad Abdin. We're starting to heat up here now with a minute still to go in round number one. Pickram, a big puncher. Six knockouts and his six wins. And I mean, I've seen him knock guys out and just made the highlight film, every one of them. I mean, he, you know, speed is, is power in this business. And the, and the punch that really hurts you is the one that you don't really see coming. And that's uh, what uh, I've seen Greg Pickram put on a lot of guys. Camille McCline 
His two wins also came by way of knockout. His one loss, though, he got stopped. Gary Bell, up and coming Shelly Finkel prospect. Under 30 seconds to go here in round number one. Both guys starting to open up a bit. Nice the moment yeah, punches by Greg Pickram. Good hand speed there. The you know Pickram, as you were saying, Bob, as we're under 10 seconds to go in round number one. This is scheduled for eight. Place neither fighter has been before. Round number two coming up. And here comes Danielle. We're taking a little corner there, Gregory Pickram out of Houston, Texas. 25 years of age. He was a little kid fighter, you know. He was a, like a 10 to 11, 12 year old, had a lot of amateur experience and then laid off completely for, for 10 years, 11 years, didn't do anything and came back into the gym about 180 pounds and started boxing again and decided he wanted to try it before he got, you know, before he got too, before he got too old for the sport. Looking over at Jamil McCline. Going to work on those eyes already. Only four professional fights. Also 25 years of age. Round number two, it's scheduled for eight. A lot of Vaseline dripping off the nose of Greg Pickram. Klein, you know, he's obviously he's well endowed for a jab, and, and he hit Greg with a good one there uh, in the first round. But I think that's what that's what he wants to do when he gets when he gets inside on Pickram. He really doesn't know what to do. He doesn't he doesn't have any kind of experience to take his back foot out and give himself some room to punch or whatever. So that would probably be all Pickram's office. Pickram trying to get to the body, but those big long arms of McCline really protected him. He keeps his elbows in a good place. Pretty good deep. Oh, drops a left in. Seemed to buckle the legs of Pickram there. I couldn't tell if they buckled him or if, he, or if McCline picked him, picked him up off the ground. It may yeah. have been that. But this is what Pickram needs to do in this fight. Bend, stay loose, you know, and, and faint this guy out of position in order to try to, you know, drop those bombs on him. You can't just... To overpower a guy this size. This guy is not just big, but very physical. A little more than a minute going by here in round number two, and I've got to tell you, this is a pretty good paced fight for heavyweights. I almost feel like we're being given a breather after the first two bouts today. I mean, I'll tell you something. I mean, I'm trying to get control of my heart right after that Abdeen fight. We're coming to you from the Fernwood Resort and Country Club on the Cedric Krishna Sports Network. This is Heavyweight Explosion. I'm Arnie Tokyo Rosenthal along with Bob Spagnola. And what a show it's been. And again, applause to our matchmaker, Bill Benton. Well, I hope Bill doesn't expect a lot of this because as a manager, I sure don't want to have any part of it. <laughs> Oh, and I see all of a sudden Pickram claiming that he was hit low, keeping his hand down there. We got about a minute to go in round number two. He's trying to use that up jab and that touch him in the body. That's what he needs to do. Use the assortment of punches that he has because you can't just go right through this guy's pop and go right through his guard because he is he's some physical specimen. But I think it's what Greg doing, moving around, using the whole ring. Make this big guy carry all that 250 pounds around the ring for a while and see what kind of condition he's in. A lot of holding going on now. McCline's only been four rounds one time, and then when he got his one draw, all of his other fights were all one-rounders. And even though he's been up there working as a sparring partner, he looks a little tired right now. Yeah, well, you know, you don't, when you're a sparring partner, you know, you get the work that the guy that's paying you needs and not necessarily what you need. Take a look over there. Big Jamil McCline. Six foot six. 
236 pounds, 25 years of age. And we take a look at some action here from round number two. And it seemed that every time Pickram would get in close, McCline's starting to tie him up right now. Well, I, I don't think uh, Klein, I think he's willing, but I just don't think he's experienced with the fight on the inside. He he doesn't want to be on the outside where he feels like Pickram can jump in and hit him with something, but once they get on the inside, I, I don't think he, just, he knows what to do. And uh, Pickram actually looking a little tired at this point, too. And I got to wonder, you know, I think he's questioning their choice of opponent. This fighter's not making him look good. Pickram's winning the rounds, but not looking good doing him. Round number three, this is scheduled for eight. They're heavyweights. That's Greg Pickram. He's in the blue shorts. Jamil McCline, six foot six. He's in the white. Pickram came into this fight six one and one. Six KOs. McCline two one and one. All of his wins also by the knockout route. I think what they've told the Greg Pickram here is, you know, go out there, show this guy some different angles, and you know, don't don't try to exchange. Oh, and a good left hand. hand. Good left hook lands on McCline, sends him storming in. And he landed a punch himself there. He woke him up, I'll tell you that. Read it. Stop punching. Stop punching, guys. Charlie Zrillo trying to break the fighters. I don't know who matched Charlie up with this McCline and everything, but. Yeah, it's like, uh, you know, sometimes they say leave sleeping dogs lie. It's kind of like he woke up McCline there with that shot. Upset him a little bit. Pickram landed a good left hook. McCline came firing back. Uh, another nice combination by Craig Pickram. He's finding the finding the mark there with the one-two. Oh. oh, and a big right, and out goes the mouthpiece. It's behind our, our, our announcer's table. McCline showing an, enough uh, savvy to hold on. But he's holding on for dear life, Bob. No legs underneath him, no mouthpiece either. Pickram just really going in there, trying to finish him right now. Our executive producer, Jim DiLorenzo, has recovered the mouthpiece. Now that's above and beyond the call of duty right there. Not too many guys. They're waiting for a lull in the action. Charlie Zerillo doesn't feel as a lull yet. Now that's a good referee. I, I hate to see when a, when a guy is badly hurt and they start, you know, uh, fumbling around looking for the math piece. It's really a huge, uh, you know, advantage and disadvantage for the guy that's done the damage. Still almost a minute to go in round number three. This is a scheduled eight rounder. Jamil McCline trying to get his legs back. Greg Pickram's great punching power. He's got six knockouts and his six wins. And they finally find a lull in the action. Referee puts it in. What bothers me the most is I hate when they lose a mouthpiece on a knockdown and then they put the mouthpiece in and have the guy clean it up and, a guy's, and let the guy recover right, right. from the knockdown. I was at a recent IBF and WBU rules meeting and they're not allowing that to happen anymore. They made it real clear to their refs. I mean, it, it takes, that's not a lull. It takes the guy, you know, that's the puncher completely out of it. You know, he might only have one chance in that fight to win that fight and you know safety is very important obviously but if a guy gets his mouthpiece knocked out you know he's they tell you protect yourself at all times McCline's bleeding badly from the mouth too uh, for one of those uh, shots that great pick landed but pick still being cautious and I think that's he's smart to do that Jamil McCline walking very slowly back to his corner. A big round for Greg Pickram, and we take a look at there. Really rocked McCline with a left hook. Couldn't put him down. Woke him up for a few seconds there, Bob, and then really went to work on him. For a second, it looked like McCline was going to come back, and that was not the wake-up call that he wanted. Yeah, here we have it here on the replay. It was really the left hook that did the damage, and... And uh, I, I thought he was going to go down because I thought his feet got picked right up off the ground. And this is no small man to do that to. And as you mentioned earlier, mouth bleeding profusely right now, Jamil McCline.
Round number four, and it starts with Charlie Zerillo calling time. Too much water. Over in the corner, and out they come. A lot of water used in here tonight, and for good reason. These guys have needed it and earned it. We're scheduled for eight. That's Greg Pickram. He's in the blue shorts. Jamil McCline, he's in the white. Very good third round for Pickram. Shook McCline, couldn't put him down. No knockdowns thus far in the fight. We're scheduled for eight. All of our main event fights certainly have had ebb and flow here tonight, which is generally, uh, certainly in the heavyweight division, you don't get a lot of it. Guys don't recoup so well from, from getting hit. But, you know, guys, uh, Wooten was in charge, and Kennedy definitely had his minutes. Uh, Abdeen was dominating and found himself under the deck and, and really showed a lot to stay down and take that full eight count and, and, and recover so that, uh, you know, he didn't let Derek Roddy really have his moment in the sun there. You can see the inexperience of McCline when he tries to throw that. They tell you, you know, make that step with that jab, and he's landing the jab, and he's still got that foot up in the air. Not a good sign. I know Chocolate uh, Greg Pickram has, has boxed, uh, you know, as a sparring partner for main events. He's worked with Andrew Gallat a lot. He's a real big, strong heavyweight, and, uh, you know, that's what they were talking about today. You know, hey, listen, you might not be the biggest guy, but you, you've worked with much better fighters than this. But what they were worried about was his, his awkwardness and, you know, him being wild, maybe. And, and uh, you know, when you work with a good fighter, you, you at least have some, uh, you know, idea what he will or will not do. And and uh, you know a, a novice kid like this uh, just uh, you know getting over exuberant like that can uh, can surprise you but with about a minute to go here in round number four he also does a lot of what we're watching here he feels i almost get the impression that he could tie up pickram anytime he wants to just because of the size difference yeah yep. i agree with you but it, and it's, it's got to be frustrating though for pickram. yeah it's not helping him but i think pickram is settled down to the point where he's not going to worry about if he gets tied up because he's certainly ahead in the fight and even before he was ahead, I think they told him, look, don't worry about if this guy leans on you. Don't try to wrestle with him because, you know, you, you're, you're, it's like a, you know, a running back trying to take on an offensive tackle. Referee Charlie Zerillo having his hands full, pulling the fighters apart. But doing a good job at it. Klein bullying his way. He doesn't quite know what to do, though, once he gets pink from where he was trying to get him to. He got him there, and then it was like, okay, what happens now? I didn't learn that, that page in the book yet. So we come to the end of round number four. Oh, Pickram tried to pull the string there with a the right hand counter. Round number five headed for eight as Michelle makes her way back into the ring to parade around for you. Looking in the corner there of Greg Chocolate Pickram. Very relaxed. Very and he's relaxed. about to go someplace where he's never been before. Bob, round number five. He's only been four rounds once, three rounds once. Everything else was all one round. And McCline, we take a look there, he's already also going. He's only been four rounds one time. So both fighters going someplace where they've never been. And we're not talking about six. We're talking about they got an eight-round scheduled fight. Round number five, this is scheduled for eight. Greg Pickram, he's in the blue shorts. Jamil McCline, he's in the white. No knockdowns thus far in the fight. Although Pickram's had the better of the going thus far. But you see McCline here now, they're tied up on the ropes. He's got he's got Pickram up against the ropes. Well, here he moves his hands a little bit, but he just doesn't know how to take his back foot out. He's giving himself a little bit more room right there, but give yourself a little room to punch. You can't, you know, he's smothering his own punches, and, and Chocolate knows it, so he's not even uh, really worried about it when he gets him in there like that. And I can see the little desperation in the corner of McCline. They're trying to teach him as the fight's going on. Yeah. And again, and if you're just joining us, we were talking between rounds about the psychological part here, too. He, neither one of these fighters has ever been in a fifth round. 
And they're not moving up from four to six. They're moving right up to eight. Oh, and McCline eats two punches coming in. I got news for you. Rock Pickram, though, with one shot on the way down. <laughs> I thought it might have been his head that he rocked him with, but he'll take it. Yeah, at this juncture, I'm quite sure he will. <laughs> That's all he can land. But he's, <laughs> I think he's got a little bit of respect for Kid Chocolate right now. He's been disdainful of Pickram's power thus far up to this point in the fight, but outside like this, this is Pickram's spot, you know. I mean, he can have his way in there. He's fluid. He's got good rhythm, and the chances of getting hit with something wild from this kid is, uh, you know, this kid's launching his punches. Well, now, we're half, as half, we're halfway gone around number five. McCline looks very tired. He's fighting with his mouth wide open. He is frustrating Pickram a little bit. You can see the frustration just then on Pickram's face. But you got to take what your opponent gives you, and certainly when you're in, you know, physical disadvantage like Greg Pickram is here, you, uh, you know, you can't worry about, uh, you know, the those pitfalls. Showing good poise. He's using the whole ring. Doesn't like where McCline winds up. He's walking around, doing a little bit of a Walcott shuffle. Making him get reset again. And a little tape coming loose on the right glove. Chocolate picker. Really excellent, you know, matchups with these guys. You know, I looked at this thing on paper coming into this fight, and I didn't know why they, you know, put this guy in with a, you know, guy really with it. didn't have that many more professional fights than him, but was far more experienced, amateur and professional. Here, Pickram's acting like he might want to try to do get something done here, but. Again, a lot of clutching and holding on the part of Jamil McCline as we come to the end of round number five. He's very tired. He's never been more than four. He's only been there one time. And this one's scheduled for eight on Heavyweight Explosion. See, take a look in the corner of Jamil McCline. And all we can say is they're trying to teach him as he goes here, Bob. He's four fights into this, and I saw his corner in desperation trying to tell him what to do when he had Pickram on the ropes. Uh, more or less what you described. Move that back leg back. Give yourself a little punching room. But as we said, he hasn't learned it. Well, I mean, you know, you can get some great advice in your corner, but if you haven't practiced it in the gym, you know, it's really tough. It's, it's not like Hollywood where they tell you, okay, switch to South Park, get now. And there you see Pigron land a really well, nice really, combination. That doesn't really happen, huh? Well, I mean, it, it's happened to me a few times. But. <laughs> I saw Lou Filippo, who refereed the first two Balboa Creed fights down in Palm Springs Tuesday night. He's a wonderful character, Lou. I always tell him, though, he should have stopped that first one. Shouldn't have let Rocky take that punishment in the first fight. Round number six. We're scheduled for eight on Heavyweight Explosion. I'm Arnie Tokyo Rosenthal along with Bob Spagnuolo. Hope you've really enjoyed our show tonight. I know we certainly have. If you're just joining us, Jeff Wooden won a 10-round decision over Ricardo Kennedy. Dropping Kennedy in the process. Derek Roddy stopped by Ahmad Abdeen. Proving his record to 20-0. and And now we got two youngsters. Greg Pickram, 6-1-1, six, six knockouts. He's in the blue shorts. Against Jamil McCline, 2-1-1. He's in the white. No knockdowns thus far in the fight. Unofficially, I've got it about 50-47 at the end of five, Bob. Two rounds even, the other three all for Pickram. Yeah, I've got Pickram winning every round but one, which I called even. Let it go, let it go. Neither fighter has ever been past four. And again, this is scheduled for eight. So Greg, they're in the proverbial uncharted waters. Greg Pickram does seem to be somewhat disgusted at points in this fight, but, uh, you know, I mean, he's he's well ahead, I think. And, and you know, you just got to take what you can get sometimes. You can't always have, and certainly as things change, he was, uh, he was scheduled to fight Ole Moskev, uh, who uh, ended up being on sus suspension from a different state, and they scratched that at the last minute. But Tim Witherspoon's here training for... Uh, for his fight on HBO and you know they bring in one of his sparring partners a lot of times that can be very bad news those last minute changes we might want to mention big card coming up May 10th Madison Square Garden on HBO Bobby Chez against Evander Holyfield Tim Witherspoon as you mentioned against Jorge Luis Gonzalez 
and Lennox Lewis and Ray Mercer. Can't come up with a better triple header than that. But I'll tell you this, as good as that card is, it can't have much better action than we've had here today in Heavyweight Explosion. Well, we really got to be proud of the uh, CKSN on this, uh, you know, putting together heavyweights at this level, uh, as we uh, alluded to in the opening. You know, it's really difficult. Managers, you know, uh, fringe promoters, everybody's trying to protect and get wins, you know. It, uh, you know, you got to, it, it's really tough, uh, you know, for a, for a mid-range, uh, oh, nice uh, pick run. He slipped that big hook by... McCline, but he didn't take advantage of it. But it, it, it's really hard work to do to, to get managers to agree to put their guys in real fights like this where, you know, a handicapper will have a hard time ahead of time deciding who's going to win. Heads and shoulders came together there. Pickram again frustrated. And he started to do some things that he necessarily wouldn't want to do to try to get at McCline. And he's eating some punches and some headbutts and some things that he wouldn't necessarily have to eat. He's just getting bored almost in there. McCline again having him on the ropes, not knowing what to do once he has him there. But at we're least it's the better end. than what he's getting in the middle of the ring. Yeah, we're coming to the end of round number six. It's scheduled for eight. Both fighters seeming to get a second win now. Seven on the way in the shell. Just holding up the lucky number seven for somebody. Speaking of lucky numbers, we got lucky number drawings coming up a little bit later on tonight for the Dare program, so make sure you stick around. Jamil McCline has that look on his face, Bob, as we looked in his corner, as if to say, why did you schedule me in an eight-round fight? Why am I here in round number seven? This was a swing bout. These almost always end up going for the lesser. If it's a four or a six, it ends up, seems like it always goes to Yeah, four. very unusual that if you got a collapsible eight to six, that it winds up going the eight. I, I, but that was Jim DiLorenzo's decision. I understand McCline's going to come looking for Jim DiLorenzo after the show. And watch yourself all the time about that. I'm going to tell. That's our executive producer, Jim DiLorenzo, made that decision. Just want McCline to know who to come.